Jay, law enforcement certainly has their work cut out for them when it comes to synthetic drugs. The complex nature of the drug makes it hard to arrest and prosecute people. I took a look at a few of the problems that prosecutors and law enforcement are running into. In addition to the Synthetic Abuse Prevention Act, Texas law includes a list of banned chemicals and any quantity of a synthetic chemical compound that is a cannabinoid receptor agonist and mimics the pharmacological effects of naturally occurring cannabinoids. The Texas statute isn't tied to the analog section, so when you get one that mirrors or is similar, would be an analog to one of the listed ones, you can't go to our analog section and go ahead and prosecute it because the analog section is not tied to the statute like it is to the rest of the drugs. It was, it was something that was overlooked. Because of the law, the fight against synthetics creates several hurdles for law enforcement. This statute was written strangely and it needs to be uh, cleaned up a little bit by our legislators, but it is sufficient to, to pursue prosecution. These drugs are hard to identify, don't show up on regular drug tests, and can't be detected by canines. It's not readily identifiable as being an illegal substance like all the others are that, that are real substances that we have to deal with. Because these drugs can be an endless possibility of compounds, testing for the drugs isn't a quick fix. We're having to take their seized packet, take it to the DPS lab, and it would take about, if on, on a good month, it would take two weeks. We're still waiting on stuff that's probably 10 months old to get lab tests back. And after the chemicals are identified, there is yet another step. You have to have someone testify that this drug, this synthetic drug, also affects those very same cannabinoid receptors in the brain in the same way. Despite the long process, Randall County has been going after them in full force. They have closed three head shops, seized 126 pounds of K2, and $100,000 worth of synthetics and paraphernalia. If you come here to do it, we're going to take your product away from you. We're going to take the money you got, uh, you acquired as a result of your activity involving the drug, and we're going to send you to jail or prison depending on the amount you have. Among the head shops was a seemingly unsuspecting one. Sunny Days was a snow cone shop that was selling more than the icy treats. He happened to, when he was doing a business check, this was parked out there and he looked inside to make sure everything was inside and he seen huge boxes just out in plain view of synthetic marijuana. Staying one step ahead of the producers will be difficult. If something's made illegal, then they take what they have already and just you know, tweak it and they've got something brand new. So prosecutors and activists are turning to the law. And so they're trying to get ahead of them, which kind of hard to do. But really the only way that we're ever going to stop this is if we change the way the law is worded. But that's easier said than done. And you can't turn around and go, okay, there'll be no potpourri sold in the state of Texas. Well, Bed Bath & Beyond, you know, all these other places where there's not going to be bath salts. You know, there's lots of businesses that sell that kind of stuff legitimately. It's difficult for prosecutors and activists to say exactly what they want the law to be changed to. This is an ongoing struggle that states all over the country are experiencing as well. Jay, back to you.